All right, I think we are ought to start. Hey everyone, let me know if you can see me, if you can hear me as per usual. Thanks for joining. I can see that a few people have joined, but as per usual, I'm gonna test check just in case it's coming through. So do let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me, if there's any delays, if you're good to go. Cool, I got a yes, awesome stuff. All right, let's crack on. And you know, as per as before, as every other live stream from me, I think we can spend under an hour or so, around an hour, testing this new AI tool. And I think some of you might be on a wish list already. And I know some of you actually displayed interest to keep on going and keep on kind of testing these things live using your queries. So in this session, I'm gonna ask you to also share some bits in the chat. The more descriptive they are, the better AI interprets it. If you remember um, in the DALI, let's say, um, when I tested it in a previous live stream, make sure to watch it if you haven't seen that before. Um, if you would, let's say, type in something like a pencil, watercolor drawing, bright city, yada, yada, and tab generate, then it gives you a lot of different snippets um, which are based on you know millions of signals out there. I, I would presume they're using a lot of Google data, maybe imagery hosted on the internet, a lot of language processing and things of that nature, and then gives you this new auto-generated uh, pics, just like what you can see on a screen. Again, this is pencil drawings, but they're all like very intentional and intended and look like something, you know, a person would have painted, whatever the skills are like. But today it's not about DALI, uh, because DALI 2 is amazing. I make sure to watch that live stream. Today, what I wanted to test out was Midjourney. And Midjourney AI is very, very different. I think one of the people back uh, in the day described it in a previous stream as dreamy as compared to very specific and technical and high fidelity based um, drawings or image generation uh, outputs from the DALI. But Midjourney itself is from UX side, something to take note is very different because one, it has a, this gallery view or this app where you as a user can just jump on and just preview a lot of community generated bits. And as you can see, they're quite damn impressive. It's something like illustrations you would view back in the day on Muesli or, you know, some sites where you would have a lot of inspirational graphics and things of that nature. But these are handpicked, of course, curated by the actual owners of Majorney. But you can immediately tell that the fidelity of these and the actual outputs are insane. Like it's it's outrageous how good this thing uh, th these things are, right? Um, so today, what we're gonna do is actually I'm gonna show you the, the app itself of a preview. You know, it doesn't have much. Um, I guess, interesting bits apart from, you know, help FAQ support for the customers. Again, you might be on a wish list, but if you are not, you would have access to something like that where you can view a lot of different things and also get inspirations of the prompts. For, for example, this one, um, the Gates of Hell Gothic Revival Architecture by Mark Yada Yada. So I presume it's an artist and the style of his um, describing other bits 4K, so you can describe a lot of other bits, you know, even like aspect ratio of the image you would receive. Um, but this compared to DALI, I think they would interpret the same, but maybe has less of the natural language interpretation capabilities because a lot of these good uh, outputs and renders are based on this, you know, coma or, or separation based type of properties or identifiers for lack of a better term. So the more specific you are naturally, the better the results are going to be. Um, and, you know, just looking at this, this is mind blowing and very, very impressive. Um, a question from Paul, who owns the images in a legal sense? Um, I'm not sure about this. I know that DALI is trying to be the open AI, so copyright free, I guess, for the time being. Um, with Midjourney, it's something, I think, TBC, but, you know, we can follow up on that. Maybe I'm going to post it somewhere in the community, maybe on Design Squad, um, or, you know, once this image goes live, I can just post it in the comments. But that's a good call out. Um, for now, I would presume uh, that you would own the copyright, even if it's, let's say, based on someone else's style, uh, because a lot of these results are based on something else people actually have done in the past. But it's a really good call out. Cool. And 
you know, if you want to crack on, please start putting your queries. Again, I'm not going to be able to do all of it as, as in before, but we can kind of play around and see exactly how far we get to that. Um, so this is the viewer, as you can see. This is my basically screen of what would I see as a, as a user of Midjourney AI. Um, and, and again, getting inspired. And I tend to just copy paste these things for the inspiration because once you sit on the actual tool where you get uh, call outs for AI, it's, it's very, I guess one, it's confusing because you don't know what to ask for, but two, you kind of need to play around for a long time until you arrive at something tangible and good as what you see here on the screen. Now, without further ado and drum roll, I'm gonna show you what the actual Midjourney AI looks like. And, you know, to some it's going to be disappointing, to some maybe it's going to make a lot of sense. But Midjourney AI UI is on Discord. So this is something brand new, which kind of blew my mind because I was like, oh, it's surely going to be just an app UI, which you would see on its viewer. But no, it's actually you are chatting with a Discord bot and you're trying to communicate with the real Discord board and saying, this is what I want to have. As you can see, this is a prime preview. A lot of people are just posting and saying, hey, give me this image. Um, and then Midjourney bot would spit out a result like this, and you are then able to pick, let's say, upscale one to four. Again, the UI here could be improved massively, but it's a bot. And then you can also variate, let's say, number one or number two. And if I will, let's say, take that just for a pure demo so you understand how it works. Imagine that this is my query, um, specifically with aspect ratio, quality, descriptor, style. I would just say, variate me number one, and I could click on that button. And then that puts me in a queue somewhere. Let me see if I can find my queue here. As you can see, someone is trying to get a lot of war imagery, auto-generated imagery. But here, as you can see, VA experience has 30%. So this updates as a ticker. Um, but over time, basically, boom, now it got me four different variants of the same image and I can then upscale one. Naturally, the first take is quite high level, um, but then you can kind of go into the specifics and see exactly how it is. But as you can see, there is a lot of stuff. And I think as a UI, this kind of was, again, very surprising to me because we have a lot of chats, right? There is general chats for people who are, I guess, subscribers to the actual tool like I am. So, the tool itself right now costs like 10 bucks a month for, I think, 200 generations. Um, if you would do extras, it would be like a cent. So there is a very interesting way to also, you know, to onboard customers and introduce the pricing model. And whilst if we were to compare DALI and this side by side, DALI is, you know, relatively free, I guess. API calls are going to be, uh, you know, charge based. But Midjourney, as a tool which runs on Discord primarily, is um, you know free trial for in invited people, and then you have to kind of top up to subscribe. So something to keep in mind because this is kind of like what the future, I guess, of the tools would look like. Again, nothing too you know crazy, but you can kind of see a lot of. Um, a lot of different bits and bobs. Okay, I want at least one to give me an example. Oh, I got one from Paul. Green and yellow pig drinking coffee, New York cafe. All right, let's try that out. Um, make sure to give also, let's say, if you want it to be in HD, 4K, if you want it to be the style of sorts, you could kind of, you know, you can give a lot of different notes and, and things of that nature. But I would basically, as a user here, I would type imagine, and as you can see, a prompt, which would be that Paul's green, yellow pig in a cafe, and then it would put me in a queue and start generating things. Um, one of the things which I noted down as a user, I guess, as I was testing it, is that it took a bit maybe longer than Dali. It's hard to compare these things, especially when you're in a chat. Um, but it seemed like it takes slightly longer, and I'm not sure how much of it they're actually using together. Um, but as you can see, it's slowly progressing, so I'm able to view a percentage, and it just edits the same message over and over again until it arrives, you know, through recursions and loops. Um, but but yeah, you can immediately see where it's getting at. Um, 
slowly getting. And and Paul, by the way, in the chat, if you want to specify as well, because it's going to give us an options to variate or upscale one of the results, do let me know as well, or we can jump to another query. Or if you want to see other results from other people in the chat on Midjourney, do let me know as well, because there's quite a few different interesting bits. Cool. So that's that's the result. And as you can see, you can you can see immediately that, for example, which if I would take and try to, let's say, upscale number four, then it would reproduce it in more HDR and add a bit more definition to it. Oh, I think I pressed the wrong one. This is where I think their UI, even if it's an, oh, I thought this one, the fourth one, I don't know even why I think it's, this is a second one, but immediately can see that this confused me for a while until I got a hold of it, playing it just on a couch for a good 20 minutes before. Um, but regardless, I think the principle stands, it would just simply upscale that. And I'm not sure this is what you wanted, Paul. So I'm just gonna try to do it again. Imagine. Cafe, 4K, pop art. All right, let's see what that gives us. And I, I feel like you also, whilst we're, you know, running through this example, you can see other bits and bobs of what's been auto-generated. Um, and it's damn impressive. Like these type of landscapes and, you know, play with the lights and things of that nature. Maybe it's, it's a bit of a gamer in me, but like I'm very fond of these, um, I guess, hardcore computer graphics which are very engagement driven and and built to engage and you know just for users to get more immersed within the experience itself but let's see exactly what we get okay 80 <laughs> percent let's see if the ai okay this is it this is what you get um, I don't know, I guess we could variate it as well or upscale it, but as you can see, there is a lot of, a lot of bits and bobs here. Um, any, anyone else in the chat would want to run with one of the queries, otherwise I'm going to pick actually one which definitely worked from, you know, the past examples and maybe just to show you a few, uh, stimulus ways of doing it. Like, let's see this one. Uh, a Tron bike, vintage motorbike, futuristic Tron, hyperrealism. So meaning you can actually use brands or stylistic elements, themes, parameters, whatever you want, basically. You can actually, you know, Akira, this is anime. Behance is, I guess, the style of the portfolios, which you would be typically seeing on the internet. Cyberpunk, brass, things of that nature. You know, this is almost like a very, very specific combination of so many different keywords. Um... Okay, two rabbits watching a shooting star in the sky. But I'm going to make a twist on that, I think, because we, again, need to be quite specific. Uh, two rabbits, 4K, retro, cyberpunk, and I'm getting inspired from the previous example. Uh, synth, wave, haze. Uh, pastel colors, color. Okay, let me see if that actually gonna work out for us. And I see a few other bits in the chat, by the way. So don't don't fret. I'm, I might come back to it. You know, again, we're gonna need to see how quick this produces, and then we can go deeper into it. This is going to be trippy. 60%. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, while whilst it generates, um, you can actually see it in, 
your stuff. As you can see, I qu have quite a few from the past. So I was playing around with this style of a bit more organic type of, you know, visualizations of, of uh, nanotech or viruses or things of that nature, which was very fascinating to see exactly how it interprets it, as well as very specific illustrations of uh, animals and, you know, in sweaters and the self-portrait for a YouTube thumbnail. All right, let's see if it actually gives us... Okay, this is what we got. As you can see, it is, I guess, on point trying to merge so many different ways to represent these things. Um, and then, of course, I could variate it. I could upscale it. You can go so much into the detail, but it, or actually retry. As you can see, there is that option. But what you cannot do, what Dali does, I guess, is change the specific element within an image. So if you remember on Dali, and I don't want to come back too much, I could just highlight this, click regenerate, and then it would, it would give me, I guess, variants without that specific motive in the image uh, itself. Um, okay, I got one big one by Victor. I'm going to definitely do that. Again, get, take example from him so that we can actually try to find the limits or try to find the, you know, how does it interpret um, the thing. So copying and pasting as is, again, keep it actually, you know, safe language and everything in between. Um, and meanwhile, enjoy what other people are generated, like a crystal cave, which is underground crystal cave, a big sword stuck in the ground, green random lights. So someone is actually generating like an image for you know, for, uh, I guess, a game or something, <laughs> or trying to almost produce concept art, which could be used in so many different ways. Um, and whilst it generated, um, Shauri asks, how good is it in coming up with isometric designs? Um, why don't we try? So Shauri, if you could kind of post what you want, is it like, you know, a landscape of a hero? for isometrics um, or something like that. Do let me know the query, I can push it in um, while it's generating 92%. Okay, we got our giraffe. Um, it's a bit odd. Um, and that's probably understatement. All right, I'm gonna take one of them and I'm gonna upscale it just to see if it improves. And I'm gonna take that third one, which I think is this option. Let's see exactly what it does. Okay, let it upscale. Um, again, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna try to in get inspired to from community feed. That looks awesome. All right, so I'm gonna take giant robots made of metal frames and supports and freight containers um, while I'm waiting for another query. And I'm gonna add isometric perspective maybe would be the best um, but let's see what that actually spits out in the end okay the giraffe is going pretty well but it's very trippy it's almost like mid explosions and a lot of structural damage to the actual thing Okay, this is it. This is the result. Let's, you know, then you can actually make variants, upscale to max, or lightly upscale. Um, if I were to upscale to max, it would add even more detail to this. But it generally doesn't improve. The variance actually makes it a bit different, basically. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't kind of go, you know, off tangent and produce something which would be very, very different. Um, let me see what it has. Okay, this is not... <laughs> <laughs> so this is isometrics, um, following up on the case, as you can see, uh, it took, I was expecting something like that to be as a result. 
uh, adding isometric design, but that's probably the closest to isometrics there is. Um, everything else seems to just be very static 2D view of two dimensions. Okay, and then we get variants. You get the drill, I think. We, we don't need to go more in the details unless you want to. Let me see what's in the chat. Um, uh, what are some of the real world use cases for Midjourney currently? Currently, this is probably more for creative experiments and I covered kind of that with Dali as well. Um, I feel like anything AI, to be honest, it's, it's a few years in advance where you look for actual applicable use cases. But, you know, working like if you look at it from vision standpoint, from content design strategy, UX product design, and you kind of project a, at least five years in advance, this is going to replace a lot of tasks we do or a lot of tasks a lot of people actually are professionals in. And this is going to provide the tools to a lot of people to quickly generate ideas. And also another point is the inclusive design. In the future, basically, any, absolutely anyone can produce high fidelity, one-off, unique artwork uh, using the AI. So people who might not even have, you know, uh, functional hands, let's say, or have a good enough vision, or even quote unquote creativity muscle of sorts, which you can develop to, but you know, let's say someone who would never consider doing this, they would just be able to either talk to their phone or ask someone to just input that idea and create stuff. So you almost use AI as a proxy, not just to produce your graphics, but also to think for you in a way, synthesize the inputs, but you know, connect the dots and give variants. Um, so kind of giving you like this, for example, which if we follow what's in the chat, you know, someone is that guy or, 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 or a lady, I don't know who it is, but they basically are trying to, you know, for a while, for it's been so many images, they're trying to produce that sword and they're following up with that AI and trying to craft it home. You, you can see it immediately. This is an example. So this is a person who already is in that futuristic mindset or that use case where, you know, they just arrived at the tool and just now are, are talking to it and saying, you know, enhance, 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 like, you know, using that CSI meme of like going deeper and deeper and deeper and asking it to clarify or move things around. So ultimately, you know, AI is just going to be a workhorse for you. You're going to need to give it ideas, but it's going to kind of be suggestive and saying maybe this is what you are after. So from that notion, the use cases are immediately, I would just consider that you know, if you're right now producing a lot of these landscapes or concept art, this is probably the time to learn new things or learn more so that you can work with that AI in the future and do that. Um, the use cases in tangible terms for UX design is going to be content production, um, generative websites, you know, living uh, things, motion graphics, animations. You know, if you can produce one frame, you can produce thousands which slightly move and you can ultimately create a 3D movie or photorealistic movie without having to do anything ultimately. If you can define a story, style, hit generate and then get that as a result. But that's my take. And and I see it, this as an inevitable bit, by the way. Um, but yeah, not to go too much off the tangent. Um, let me see exactly what did we what did we produce in the end? I don't think it was too impressive. Um, it's you know, it's lacking. <laughs> but I like what what people here, which is very spending time and creating this going back and forth and still trying to en enhance it. That person deserves a credit because they're trying to get more and more. But, you know, this is if you take someone like a game artist or 3D artist, they are basically could take these screenshots and say, this is what the scenery should be on a level design for your game uh, in sci-fi realm, you know, whatever it is, basically. So that would be one of the use cases. Um, Let's see, uh, I might be, again, jumping through the, you know, notes, I might be missing some of the bits in the chat. So, you know, forgive me, but let me just take one of a study room with neon lights, isometric art, 3D futuristic. Let's take that. 
let's see if that that actually generates one thing by the way what what um a bit is annoying to me as a mid-journey user is that in this chat it's so kind of like you know it, it's very obtrusive when you try to generate things and someone else tries to do the same and if i would go to let's say a newbie chat uh, it's even more crazy because you're gonna have like uh you know 20 people fighting for you yeah, like this one newbis one as you can see one minute ago so we were literally in seconds driving you know d different prompts to the ai and trying to get the result i think we're not doing too bad in this chat specifically it's generating but it's very low fidelity that's what I, you know, um, I wonder if we can be very more specific. Study room with Neolites, isometric art, 3D, futuristic. I'm going to do one example. So I'm going to take the same imagine prompt. I'm going to copy some of that prompt from uh, Shaurya. And sorry if I butcher your name. Um, and then I'm also going to add some from that uh which might not make sense insane detail maybe that's what we're missing octane render uh i've seen those keywords before beautiful applied okay i'm gonna cop copy <laughs> quite a few bits from here and let's see if that up works as you can see there is some sort of syntax as well which i don't not aware yet might need to look into it but applied and ar and stuff like that okay let's see the only thing what i'm gonna delete is many random rocks stones i guess this probably would be working all right let's try it out <clears throat> um to, 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 what is your outlook for automation in general um do you see it positively or negatively by Kevin? Uh, I feel like this is neither positive nor negative in a way, but like I took a stance that this is inevitable, like automation in whatever field you are, the more simpler the tasks, the quicker it's going to happen. Um, it's inevitable. You're going to have it. So you either get on boat and do it right and support these things and actually test it and influence it and work on it, or you're going to be on the receiving end and you're going to need to play catch up. And then it's going to be, you know, yet another iteration of internet where um, a lot of decisions are being made for you, basically. So, you know, it's also not ideal. So to me, it's, I guess, leaning more on positive end, but I also see a lot of you know, negative aspects to that or, or things which might impact a lot of different people. Um, cool, let's see. Uh, what did we arrive to? Okay, that's the old one. Okay, this is the new one. So it's closer. And now if we would take one and upscale and I'm going to choose, let's say, number one. I hope it is going to give a bit more fidelity to it or add a few more objects. Um, this is very useful for manager stakeholders when they say they want something like X, Y, Z. Connect the dots along with designers. Yeah, for now, but in the end, in the future, it's going to become the tool of the designers. Like... Um, you know, anyone, absolutely anyone. And this is not just imagery. It's going to be videos, motion graphics, sound, websites, like anything you are involved now in producing in matter of hours, wireframes or, you know, whatever it is, designs you use in UI terms. All of it could be automated. We have design systems, again, which we are hammering throughout the years now. You know, with a good enough algorithm, you can pick it up and just work on it. We're almost done. It's adding a few different bits. Looks very spaced, you know, it lo looks very, very empty in a way. Um, where did it go? Okay, this is it. This is basically what it gets. I'm gonna try to upscale to max just to see what's that ceiling for an image like that, trying to merge a few different bits. You know, trying to pick the specific render, uh, how many, how much detail, things of that nature. 
Okay, that that person actually give up gave up on uh, on his explorations with that cave, I presume. Cool. Okay. So this is the result. Um, is it anywhere close to what you imagine? I guess with the result like that, you would need to, as a designer, pick it up and go back to Photoshop or 3D software and try to generate new objects, new textures, things of that nature. Maybe this is like a starting point, like in a lot of um, tech right now, like a generative tech, um, in a lot of different fields, you know, I guess these tools are viewed as a first step to kind of spark ideas and use as a stimulus. But, you know, looking at all those results in the gallery, this is way more than that. This is a finalized result. If you spend enough time chatting with that AI and trying to arrive at some sort of object or illustration or things of that nature. So, yeah. Um, all right, I have another query from Paul. The million dollar, qu oh, okay, this is, this is a question actually. The million dollar question will be the cost, how much they will charge by year. Um, so by the way, this is already, it's all mid journey already is uh, being charged for. So maybe you missed the beginning, I kind of covered the payment models. Um, let's say Dali asks you to pay by query for API call. So it's gonna be sent per, let's say request. Um, in whatever capacity it is. Uh, Midjourney asks you to pay like 10 bucks to 20 bucks a month for a couple of hundred queries or unlimited actually. Um, but then if you are exceeding that, it's going to charge you like one cent per request. And I might be butchering the actual details, but it's somewhere near close to that. So, you know, in the end, I would imagine this is a massive taxing effort for their servers and their algorithms you know um i think open ai not dali but some something else like um some other of their ai uh algorithms where it's hundreds of terabytes worth of code basically um so run that x you know thousands or million queries is going to be very expensive and also taxing on environment and you know the energy um required to sustain this so there's a lot of angles i guess Cool. All right. Does anyone have any other qu queries? Otherwise, I'm going to pick one from the inspiration here and I'm going to go and proceed with one. Um, let's see. I like the cyberpunk uh, aesthetic a lot, but so the like um, other bits like uh, steampunk and a bit more retro punk type of things. Um, I like Oh, this one. Let's see if we can kind of pull off something like that. I'm literally just going to copy that and see if I can actually arrive at something slightly better or even close to it because maybe something is missing. As you can see, there is a lot of names here. So there's either artists or people or something like that. Glass Modern Home with people mingling. Um, let's replacing that with partying. Um, two cars parked up front, rainy day atmosphere, cinematic light, neighborhood light. Okay, let's see if that actually gives us anything good. <laughs> um, hey, Dipta, uh, welcome, welcome. Um, we've been running through a few bits. Again, if you want me to try to do something next, do let me know. Uh, post in the chat your query, we can run through that too. I'm just real impressed with this person's persistence. <laughs> um, all credit to uh, Cyridris, Cyridris, um, but he or she's been hammering these queries for these awesome caves and this aesthetic. All right. Yeah, you see, this is this is a bit disappointing. I already can see that my query for AI is going to be very flat as compared to this. And I literally just copied the query and changed two parameters or properties or, or variables. And it gave nothing like that. 
And even if I would upscale it, it's, it's very, very bland. <laughs> it's muted in a way in terms of high fidelity or any source of fidelity. I could variate it maybe, but yeah. All right, give me, give me a prompt. Um, let's try one of yours. Maybe repeat it if I haven't uh, checked what you posted before. All right, while I'm waiting, I'm gonna try to copy another character portrait, tired old man. Let's try a woman in power plant. That's probably going to be ignored. Plant operator. Let's call it machinist. Uh, overall, strong lightning, hyper real, trending in art station. Okay, another test. Let's see if this is going to be any close to where we wanted to get to. And I want something which I can actually save and be proud of. <laughs> All right, I have another one. Um, from Udipta, Dragon, Island, Thunder, Cinematic, Atmospheric, High Detail, Ambient, Lightning. Okay, I'm gonna try that too. Let's actually hit two at once. Might as well while we wait. Because um, I would imagine these queries are Pro process separately because there are so many chats and so many people actually generating what we want to see. Boom. Okay. So this is getting somewhere. I want the result like this. So let's see if it actually can pull off something like that. All right. And I'm going to go with that third the face is a bit bit mingled um but i like everything else um upscale number three let's see how that goes and meanwhile not to not to shoot in different directions uh, from the hip but look at this that's pretty damn cool Already can see some of the different bits, even if it's progressing 76% still. Okay, this is an upscale of that character. Mm, still upscaling. I guess if you go deep enough, maybe that's a... Um, I guess the opportunity there, you have to just keep upscaling for it to keep adding the detail for it to look, you know, good enough. 82%. And then the, wow, this is awesome. Pretty damn awesome. Which one of them should I upscale further? Because I can't, I mean, honestly, apart from maybe third one, but first, sec second, and the fourth one are something um, I would just go crazy with. So do let me know which one do you want to upscale or even variate if you want to produce um, any other um, examples. Uh, maybe Dipta, if you want to follow up, I can do that for you. Um, right, let's see if... Okay, this is oof, very, very, very mixed up. But I'm going to upscale to the max just to see how far can we take that um, machinist woman example. One and two looks cool. Okay, so I have... Actually, let me maybe create a poll. Haven't done that before on live stream, so bear with me. Um, let me know if you can actually smash that and, and, and give a vote. How about that? <laughs> Just so I don't lose it in the chat, because again, this is the annoying part about my journey, I guess. Um, I see that number one is taking, number one is taking the lead. Number four, I'm going to give another two seconds and then we can jump with it. 
I'm, I'm sure nobody's gonna get sad, you know, uh, but number two, let's stick with number two for the sake of it. Um, so upskill number two, boom. And then I'm gonna go see exactly what did we get if we upscale it to the max with our machinist. Okay, this, this is not too bad. It's winking actually, so. So that's not not a bad result. I guess it's close enough to what you know. If this again, the faces are that bias, which is overlooked, I guess, by AI, or it's not too biased by what you would, as an artist, you would want to kind of you know make the eyes pop and things of that nature. Doesn't matter if you edit photos or you do some sort of 3D render or things of that nature, because this is where our eyes would actually you know focus on from a human perspective. But I kind of like it. I mean, you know, I could add a few more details and then call it a day. I mean, it's it's impressive as is with all the shine and things of that nature. Cool. Let's see what the dragon is like. Is it produced yet? Uh, oh, here it is. Upscaling 79%. <clears throat> Okay, so almost there. Cool, I'm gonna upscale this to a max to see if it improved because if you zoom in, it's a bit, you know, you can see, okay, there could be a dragon here or it could be like branches if you know, if you're not careful. So I'm gonna upscale. Oh, and I can see we joined by actual Udipta on the chat. <laughs> Smart. So he's actually competing with us in a way. He's hammering all the different bits. This is another thing, by the way. Um, as you can see, we had a chat uh, on a live stream, actually. Udipta was, and I presume it's the same person. Um, so he logged in into his mid journey and now is trying to pick up. So you kind of can remix your stuff or follow on. You can see what other people actually do and just, you know, like let's say this one is generated by someone in a chat. I could just upscale that thing while they do something else. So there's a bit of a collaboration effort too in this. Um, <laughs> well done. Um, let me see exactly if I can upscale mine to the max while I'm on, on that thought trail. Um, and then I'm going to take another query. I can see where we have another in a chat. Just a second. This is pretty damn cool. As you can see, this kind of caught my eye. You can specify the height and the width and what render do you want to use, what light. And then this is exactly how you would generate in the future your content for a website. If let's say as a developer in the API, you just say, oh, give me an image of nanotech virus based type of image, 3D render to illustrate this. I don't know, new thing or, or medicine development in health tech. Um, these are the dimensions, give me a random result. It could give you a different image for an article every time the user reloads the website. Again, one of the random use cases, I don't know if it's good or bad, but you can kind of see exactly how that could be used in content design. Um, okay, let me not lose my trail of thought. So Dipta took the variance of the same and that's how you get it. As you can see, my result, which I upscaled, um, if I can actually find it, is this it? No, it's upscaled by, okay, this is it. So this is my result, I guess. But I can see that a lot of other bits which have been remixed is getting other bits and bobs. And again, would need some retouching to be, you know, clear to understand what's going on. Um, 
but your mind certainly can picture this and kind of can take and, and, and drive a story, so to speak, of what's going on in this shot. Um, one thing which I'm going to give a massive credit to the AI is the composition. Every freaking image it generates has the composition, which, which almost like is based on golden ratio. It's based on the rule of thirds and many other ways to represent the detail or multiple objects. And I have no idea how it does it. To me, if I would write an AI for it, it probably would be one of the first things I would look into, and maybe they did. But just credits, you know, where it, where credit is due, because it's just bloody impressive. Okay, I'm gonna take another query, by the way, while it's going on. Um, and again, this is all awesome, right? Like everyone is in a, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, because it's like, uh, you just look at the chat or you look what's going on in all the other bits and you're just getting lost with that stuff. All right. Um, how about space, cave, dark, mysterious, nebula, green, sp smoky, saturated? I'm going to take that. Um, and I'm going to also add um, octane render, which I think was one of those things which I like how it renders. Um, volumetric light was another thing, which, you know, again, my bias and, and what I liked um, in it. Um, space, cave, dark, mysterious. Let's stick with that. <clears throat> All right, and let me meanwhile while he's doing it. The annoying bit is, um, by the way, I reached out to support for Midjourney and I asked if we could generate this somewhere peaceful, like what Dali has, you know, in this chat where I can just type in stuff and kind of work, you know, with my own thoughts or if I live stream with you, but you get the point, you kind of need a workspace which is secure, which is, you know, you can get into the flow. With this is very hard to get into a flow because it so sparks the reactiveness to me from a user perspective, purely UX and how I interpret it as a user. But the chat-based interface would be good if it would be in, let's say, individual chat or if it would be in the UI itself. Um, right now, we don't have any plans to do so long story short. So this is a bit, I guess, in a way disappointing because in a way you want to see what other people do. You want to get inspired by the queries. You want to remix like what we just did together on the chat. But also, you, you know, it's just, it, it takes a bit of uh, cognitive ability and, and taxing of, of, you know, resources to look at everything, scroll up and down and try to catch where is that image we're after. Um, so this is it, but I'm going to probably upscale one of them. Um, let's see if I can go with maybe number two or three. I'm, I'm just going to go with number two, let's say, for the sake of it. Might, might do another poll, by the way, uh, for the next query. So um, you can have a personal bot with a subscription plan. So the bot DMs you. Hmm. Okay, that's something new. So I have a subscription plan, by the way, um, but I have one which is a tenor wharf. So maybe I need to, to, to do another thing, uh, but I didn't know that. That's actually pretty good. It would be good to kind of do that in the control space again. My user experience of n equal one would be so much better. Um, I'll definitely look into that. Okay, let's see what we are getting. That's pretty cool. Looks something from Alien um, or something in that style. Um, again, the composition of it is almost perfect, or at least the rock is positioned or whatever that is. You know, the, the, the land could be slightly pushed up, let's say. But I mean, I can't complain. <laughs> And looking at what others generating, that's even more awesome. Uh, did it push down? Ooh. Okay, so this is where we ended up with that space thing. Um, let's upscale it to the max just to see exactly where can we get what's the ceiling for that specific image. Um, it does look cool. Um, <laughs> 
And and I mean, even like everything else, this is where, you know, I feel like I'm a, a child in a candy store where you have so many variations, a pick and mix of sorts, and you just see whatever people request and you're like, oh, this is awesome. Like, I, I want to say this. Um, or, you know, like it feels like you kind of participate in this and there is a partial involvement and credit for you, but not so much at all. <laughs> um, let's see if, if it can give... Where did it go now? Again, this is my pain point, jumping up and down. Wow, this is awesome. The new TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. The new TikTok for nerds, for design nerds and <laughs> people who are just amazed by technology. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> can easily spend a whole day looking at this stuff. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely addictive. All right, we're heading somewhere. Uh, give me another query, by the way. If you have one, let's let's you know let's jump into something. Um, gonna go see if we can get inspired by this generating. I like this too. Reminds me of very specific artist. I can't recall who. Maybe it was Mullins. But it's almost like this is where I would question, is it is it a bit derivative of that original art or not? That's really cool. A woodcard face in a tree trunk. That's awesome. All right, let's see if we got where we wanted to. Ooh, that's awesome. And now imagine if you can add a spaceship to it um, or something else so it doesn't look as, you know, I guess background lag because this would be perfect for a concept design for one of the games um, that this is what the level should look like so you know therefore you can do something about it but other than that it just looks very very cool um, I have to leave that's awesome don't worry about leaving um this recording is going to be available by way it's going to be republished immediately and eventually going to add timestamps to that too so feel free to jump back in um try pressing that inbox icon left of the question mark icon on the top uh you, you where is that i guess i'll, I'll need a tutorial <laughs> and um it's the mention box on Discord. Uh, the mention box. Okay, okay, fine. I'll I'll figure that out. <laughs> All right, let's let's take another um, another query. Meanwhile, let let me actually borrow something. Maybe a bit like this um, the green nature and the foliage or or something along those lines this also looks pretty damn cool at least in the results you can find um in the gallery uh imagine aerial view of lush jungle rainforest a village lots of trees and large single in the middle um should i try a surrender or just leave it maybe let's leave it like that i don't want to get too attached to the specific stylistic bits okay we got another query and udipta thanks for your help by the way i'll need to check it it's very hard to you know to do that on live stream when you need to uh navigate a tool or something like that <laughs> um, but I'll definitely check that out you know I hope it's just not too annoying for anyone to do that in the chat with the tool but you know if it actually works that way it's it's even better <laughs> um, cool all right so it's generating I can see other bits which are looks stylistically awesome colorful puddle um a 3d character and this is our result looks quite photorealistic i'm just gonna go and upscale let's say the first one 
And on the chat, we have Mountain Top, Explorer, Atmospheric Perspective, Pastel Colors, uh, Tatered Flags, Horizon, things of that nature. Okay, I'm gonna just copy that in to see how that actually goes. <clears throat> You see, with this, I can already tell that it might be a bit too abstract with the result. I would want it to be as a tool, you know, each of these is basically a keyword, right? Each of these has strengths and it almost acts like a lever from A to Z. So it's almost like this as a tool could give you options to just change one or be more specific and or suggest, hey, some other users or other people actually chose these terms to get to this awesome result. Why don't you try that? Almost like that, instead of you having to discover it yourself, you kind of just go with it and, and, and you know, it, it suggests you kind of acts as a decision support tool for a person. Um, that's pretty damn cool. I'm going to upscale the number four, by the way. I'm going to make that judgment call and then see what this looks like, which is also cool. I'm going to upscale to the max. Again, sorry if I'm jumping too quick, um, but I have two queries. Let's see if that works. And Udipta is back with a dragon with glass shard wings, night sky, atmospheric, high detail. All right, let me try that as well. See if we can get something else. <clears throat> Another thing which is not so user centered, I guess, is the syntax. You know, you as a new user, eventually, I hope you're not going to keep that. You're going to be able to select it or format it later on. Let's say the quality of the image or the dimensions. Um, but there's quite a few. Ooh, and I like that, you know, all of our actual queries are being rendered right now here. Looks like it's sitting on a lounge chair on top of a peak. Um, I guess this is where it's, I'm, I'm always wondering how did it get the inspiration, where the stimulus or signals come from? You know, naturally it took a lot of like thousands, millions of images of the peaks of Everest and every other peak. Um, you know, a person was always probably likely to land there, other peaks in the background, and maybe that's how it learns and does it. Um, 90%, 100%. Where is the other one? Oh, okay, this is upscaled. You see, I would want more detail to this. If I could upscale further, or did I just do that? Yeah, okay, this is the max upscale of that. It looks like Amazon River overflowing into a village. Um, but yeah, it looks looks pretty good when it's zoomed out. Something you would maybe see on a newspaper and you know whatever unfortunate scenario in a disaster scenarios. But it looks pretty damn cool. Um, let me see what else do we have. We have this. Let me just upscale that to a max as well. See exactly if we can improve it further. Maybe it's gonna add a few different notches. And then Udipta's dragon, glass shard, wings, night sky, at atmosphere. Ooh, that looks cool. All right, I'm gonna do another um, another poll. Which one to upscale? Smash that button. Let's see exactly which one do you want to go with. The dragon looks like a moth. It does, but you know, I, I mean, what what would dragons look like? This is like uh, I think in different folk tales. You know, this is random random point, but in different folk tales, I think um, some dragons were even like with feathers and things of that nature, like a mix between a, a bird and a, um, a reptile. 
you know, uh, but then it links it back probably to, you know, to, to dinosaur uh, era and ages because that's how the dinosaurs who, which would fly would look like. But anyways, um, it's another topic. And I see that number one is actually taking a lead. Let's run with that. Um, all right, let's see if we can upscale that. Ooh, this is where, again, that point of where you put push something you choose and you spend a minute, but when someone in the background is coming up with something which is damn impressive. And maybe I can't see it in the work, you know, we're trying to create maybe, um, because there is too much skin in the game and you want it to be perfect. But then someone just randomly writes something like that, adds maybe a pyramid to your quote, and then ends up with this. Looks something like from a Marvel flick um, as a scene, as a concept art maybe, or like a setup. Uh, so it's pretty damn impressive. This is getting upscaled. And the mountaintop. I don't know if this is... You see the, the person looks a bit in reverse, um, like it's kicking off to go, but, but this is, I guess, close enough. <laughs> All right, what do we have with a dragon? <clears throat> cool, so this is it. And if I go upscale it to the max, again, we can also, I mentioned before, but as a user, you're able to make variants of that. So slightly tweak it or, you know, just ask it to generate a few different options, maybe randomize it a bit. Just like I think what we're doing here with these. I love to see how people sometimes get, if you remember in the beginning of a stream, there was this character who was going for that cave with crystals and sword and him trying to regenerate it and doing like, I guess it probably was tens or if not hundreds of different variants of the same thing. So it's good. It's, it's interesting to see where does it go. And he's obviously upscaling these. Damn impressive. Um, the only thing, by the way, maybe someone tried from um, from the chat, uh, changing specific areas, like I shown in, let's say, Dali, if I would edit an image and say regenerate, it would be able to recreate it. I wish this would have the same thing because I would maybe want to regenerate this pyramid or, you know, that kind of like a glowing uh, pit of sorts. Um, let's see. That's cool. All right, so this is what we're getting. Pretty cool. Again, a bit smudged, I guess. I wish it, it would have that capability to go even further, even if it has like light upscale redo, so you can redo it, redo it until you're happy with it or make variants of the same. Like I'm gonna do that now. Um, have you seen anyone to try to provide cues that are interface oriented, almost like asking it for a screenshot or mock-up? Mm, how do you mean about that? Um, do you mean like asking for actual UI, let's say, or like a user interface? So with DALI, we tried to do UX in the previous screen, uh, stream, sorry, we tried to do um, mockups, I think, of sorts too, like mobile apps and things of that nature, it doesn't get anywhere close to it because it doesn't understand like the meta layers of what you are trying to, uh, what, what are you getting after? And if I would try something like, let's try it out. Imagine uh, a user interface with by button, well, actually interface for commerce, website, uh, shoe store, uh, leather boots, price tags, and a discount. Um, 
yeah, I guess I guess you know that. Let's let's just see what what that does. <laughs> and <laughs> UI versus UX, yeah. So th this was a similar theme, and even if it's not rendered, what we got was very. It, it doesn't recognize like the meta layers of thing. You know, it's it's a bit far from there. I feel like you would need like a specific tool just made for it. Ooh, look at that. I mean, it's just mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. It take, took them a minute to regenerate variant, but they arrived at something which is absolutely stunning. Um, let me see if I can see. Okay, so we variant this same image. And as you can see, it's, it's almost like a merger between several dragons. So I'm going to leave it at that. Sorry. <clears throat> cool. UI versus UX. So it takes a lot of imagery from the web, I would presume, and tries to merge it. But let me see if it actually arrived at anywhere with my query. Oh, okay. Um, getting lost in the detail. This is it. Okay, so this is what you get <laughs> if you're trying to get. And again, I, I wasn't too, I guess my language wasn't, Maybe, maybe it was too technical, maybe it was too vague, but it wasn't good enough for it to interpret that you need an actual web design. So <laughs> this is what, what it is. And I would imagine if you add blueprint wireframe, you would have to, you know, get something. Um, if I would add persona, I could guarantee that it would pick up um, persona for a, uh, elderly person demo graphics and uh, behaviors described something like that and again this is very wild shot by the way um it, it's just not uh, you know it's again going to be a collage of random things um you know and maybe you could use it stylistically for whatever reason but as a stimulus maybe for mood board, but it's not close enough to where it should be. Um, and someone is trying actually a PowerPoint slide about mid-century modern. You see where that meta layer of producing an asset or a way to present something instead of that presentation thing, like this persona. So maybe you want to generate a picture for a persona, but then I would just say, just ask for elderly person, photorealistic picture, uh, smoking a pipe or something like that, and you would get that photo. Um, <clears throat> for the, those kind of persona prompts, Dali might be better, potentially, yeah. Um, cool. All right, I'm going to take another couple of prompts and we're going to need to wrap it. It's been, you know, it's been a minute. And I'm sure as a few people might got tired. If you haven't seen, you know, all of this, make sure to rewatch the first and it's going to be available as uh, as a video um, in a, I guess, immediately after a live stream finishes. But let me just take that last thing from Udipta. Oh, he just did it himself on the chat. <laughs> Um, if anyone else has one last prompt, make sure to, you know, uh, put it in the chat. I'm going to run for it. Uh, meanwhile, for Vidali, again, this is not a comparison video by any, any means, but let me just put in a persona of uh, a person for UX design, uh, demo graphics. Uh, well, you see, this is tricky because you could presume that you would want it to branch out and give you the demographics, or maybe you are the one to define that they want to buy a house, uh, pain points in terms of accessibility or something like that. You know, like it, it, you could structure the language in so many ways um, to, to get something out of it. But let me just see exactly what that generates. A random shot, again, wild shot. It's probably going to be all over a place and nowhere close to where we want it to be. That looks cool. And it's getting somewhere. Like that third, if you could upscale it, um, which we can. <laughs> Let's see what that arrives with. I guess, it, you know, that cutting of the things, I wonder if it's getting inspired by 
uh, I don't know, images on, on a web or Instagram shots or something like that. Um, all right, last one. Um, an old Japan. I'm going to skip Udipta just for the sake, because uh, you have an account. I'm going to go for Victor's last. This is very last prompt before we wrap up, by the way. And I'm also going to revisit what we got from Dali while this is generating. Um, oh, okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. So I used the previous image plus, plus my thing. Um, so that's my mistake. Let me just delete that, which could create something trippy. Um, okay, it's upscaling that Batmobile. <clears throat> And a cartoon of a black cat flying a multicolored kite illustration. And a Batmobile. Okay, let's upscale that to the max. And this is almost done too. Okay, so the persona on Dali, um, this is a joint effort, by the way. I'm glad that people call out, hey, you should try it in Dali, maybe. Um, so this is how a persona would look like on Dali 2, if you were to generate right now. So, I mean, all it does is really just goes through all these million persona images, text, whatever it can find, you know, the motives, the... Everything from symmetry to colors to fragments, it tries to figure out what we're after and then gives us a new generated bit. Um, so it's nowhere close unless you wanted to, I don't even know why, why you would use this, but maybe it's a stimulus to get inspired for colors or patterns or maybe reuse that somehow else in print, um, you know things of that nature, or to demonstrate, maybe this is very meta from UX perspective, but what, you know, inaccessible UI could look like, or like read if you use bad colors, or, you know, like poor font or things of that nature. But you get my point, basically, it's nowhere, nowhere close. Um, all right, let's see what we get to the cat. Uh, all right, so this, you know, it's, it's very vague, and probably we need to upscale. I'm gonna do a last poll for you to decide which one of these for us to go and upscale. So do let me know if you can see the poll, smash it, um, whatever you wanna go with, and I'm gonna upscale. And by the way, this is the last one, so let's finish it off and see where we get to. Number three, all the way. Okay, cool. Without taking too much time. So number three was the most voted. I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to take upscale number three. One thing what I notice in actual generated images, if you want a character or you want some sort of motive with an organism of sorts, it's almost like it's generating several beings in one. And it's like, it could be almost like perceived as two cats in one, let's say, or like what we saw in uh, dragon images. It almost seemed like there's several of them merge into one. So I wonder if it get inspired from images which has several, or maybe it cannot intuit of what that black cat is, you know, or because black cat also has so many, um, it's just black basically. If we would take a photo of a black cat, you wouldn't be able to see, you know, if it lays down in a certain way, where are the legs, where, where it, you know, it's tail, things of that nature. The same with, with the dragon, if it has so much texture or patterns, it probably gets very confused of display where it's the head or where it's, you know, any other part of it. And that's why you get these type of 
trippy images. So I guess the more clear the image, the better it is. And that's where it, that bias is going to come, I think, from AI perspective. Um, because, you know, it's notorious how, let's say, the photos on the internet or images for um, people of color, let's say, uh, where you take a photo and it has to be in a certain light for it to, you know, look great um, as compared to, let's say, exposure needed for, you know, others. So it's almost like if that's not defined, then you immediately create a bias for the AI and it cannot produce you the results you seek because it just doesn't understand, let's say. So you need to further train it. And I see that's where the opportunity is uh, to actually do. Um, because what we got is this. <laughs> and it's nowhere near you know, perfect or nowhere even near where I would want it to be. Perhaps it's so abstract that for some it would be cool, but um, let me just lastly upscale and then I'm going to run. <laughs> um, but it's very interesting challenges. I'm sure you're going to agree because there is so many, I guess, bottlenecks and ceilings you could hit um, with these things. And as you can see, so many other bits. Ooh, that's cool. That is pretty damn cool. I'm gonna just upscale the fourth one for my own benefit, but let's see where we're getting with the cat itself. No amount of upscaling is gonna do justice to this at the way uh, the AI is, I guess, calibrated for a lack of a better term, but it needs to learn. It needs pointers from me as a user saying that, hey, the actual black cat was nowhere near it should be, or the actual face of the cat was too general. You know, if I would take the same prompt to Dali 2, I'm pretty damn sure I would get a better outcome. And I think it's going to echo that point I raised in the beginning of the stream that um, Midjourney is very dreamy-like or tends to be good for abstract or I illustrations imagery. Meanwhile, Dali is very specific. Here's the results, for example, here. You know, it's poor. It's something like a child's drawing, um, but you get the point um, in this. All right, did we arrive at that conclusion? Yeah, you see, it's nowhere near. It looks like a piece of art, but also not that great. Cool, all right, let, let me wrap up. And thanks so much for everyone tuning, tuning in. Um, if you joined late, um, it's over an hour, so make sure to tune in back. We have so many different examples. Uh, I give my thoughts on the automation, the content design, its impact, use cases, where I see it's heading. Um, is it negative? Is it positive? Like, where is the opportunity for that? But there's just so much good stuff in it. Like, it's amazing of what it can come up with. Given that, of course, it's calibrated well, the biases from the web and how it interprets, you know, different signals, inputs and things of that nature. Um, but um, you get the point. So. Hope you like this video, by the way. So make sure to let me know if you want more of these live streams going through and, you know, trying to review different AI tools. But on that note, thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in um, and have an awesome rest of your weekend. So.